In this lesson, we're going to look at the radian measure of a central angle. And we first want to consider a central angle that's in a circle with a radius of r and an arc length of s. The radian measure of theta is simply a ratio, and it is the ratio of the arc length to the radius of the circle. So theta in radian measure would simply equal s over r. And so when we look at the next picture, it says here that alpha has a radian measure of 1. Well, what's happening here is that r is equal to s. In other words, the arc length equals the radius. Basically what's going on here is that when when s equals r, then theta has to equal 1, which should make sense. When those are equal to each other, you get a radian measure of 1. When the arc length is 4 times the length of the radius, so in other words, here's our arc length right here, coming all the way around, that would be considered s, and so s equals 4 times the radius, so angle beta has a radian measure of 4, and we'll see how this works. If your angle in radian measure is a ratio of the arc length to the radius, and the arc length is equal to 4 times the radius, you get 4r over r, which is equal to 4. What I'd like to also talk about is the fact that since radian measure is a ratio, that means there are basically no units. They cancel each other out. So if you had, say, s was equal to 4 inches, and the radius of the circle that s was cut into was 2 inches, the angle measurement would be s over r, which is 4 inches over 2 inches, the units would cancel and we say 2. Now we can write radians if we want. It's, it's redundant. Basically when we say that theta is equal to 2, it's implied that it's in radians. If we want to show degrees, we'll write in the degree symbol. Alright, now let's look at an example. We want to compute radian measure. Example 1 says find the measure of a central angle that intercepts an arc length of 15 inches in a circle of radius 6 inches. Round answers to the nearest tenth if necessary. So I know that theta equals s over r. I know that my arc length is 15. My radius is 6. These are both inches, so the inches cancel out. We can either reduce this, both of these are divisible by 3, so we could say theta is equal to 5 thirds, or we could get a decimal value by just rounding. So 5 divided by 3, if we rounded this to the nearest tenth, we'd get 1.7. It's approximately equal to 1.7 radians. And again, it's implied that theta is in radians when you don't write radians in. Let's now look at the relationship between degrees and radians. And we're going to start by looking at the arc length of one whole rotation. So if we have one rotation in a circle, the arc length would be considered the circumference. And I'm thinking that most of you should have seen the formula for the circumference of a circle, but if you haven't, I'll give it to you right now. So if you have one rotation, s is equal to the circumference, which is c, 
which is 2 pi r. So this is considered the arc length of one rotation. Now the measure of the angle that is cut in radians of one rotation, right? the radian measure is equal to s over r. And so if the radian measure of theta equals s over r, we now know that the radian measure of one full rotation, instead of s we're going to use 2 pi r because 2 pi r is the arc length of one full rotation over the radius. So this is the radian measure and we also know that the degree measure of one full rotation is 360 degrees. So we have 2 pi r divided by r, the radian measure of that central angle of one rotation, is equal to 360 degrees, which is the degree measure of one full rotation. We can see that the r's cancel out, and so now we can use this to come up with a conversion factor. If, if 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees, 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees, and I divide both sides by 2 pi. So when I reduce this, I get 1 on the left hand side is equal to, I can reduce the 360, 360 degrees over 2 pi is equal to 180 degrees over pi. This is considered a conversion factor. Since 180 degrees over pi is equal to 1, I can use that to convert from radians to degrees. If I take my 2 pi equal to 360 degrees and I divide each side by 360 degrees, this time I get pi over 180 is also equal to 1. And this right here is going to be another conversion factor. And basically a conversion factor is a ratio that's equal to 1 um, and we can use this to convert from degrees to radians or radians to degrees. So this first example convert each angle from, um, from degrees to radians. I have 60 degrees and I want to convert that to radians I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor or something equal to 1 and since I want degrees to cancel, I want to use the conversion factor that has degrees in the denominator. So I would multiply by pi over 180 degrees and I would reduce. 60 goes into itself once, goes into 183 times. The degrees cancel and I get pi over 3. So I know that 60 degrees is equal to pi over 3 and I'm going to put this in parentheses because you don't need to write radians because radians are what we consider pure units. It would be inches over inches, miles over miles, so you do not need to write any units in. If we take negative 240 degrees, we want to convert that to radians. I want radians in the numerator, I want degrees in the denominator, I can, the zeros, I can divide both by 10 to reduce, and 6 goes into both of these, so that's going to be 3. 6 goes into here 4 times. When I multiply across, I get negative 4 pi over 3, and so that's equal to negative 240 degrees. Now we can convert from radians to degrees using the other conversion factor. So I start with a, which is pi over 4. If I want to convert that to degrees, then I want to use the conversion factor that has degrees in the numerator. So I'm going to have 180 degrees divided by pi. The pi's cancel. And I can reduce 180 by 4. 4 goes into itself once. 4 goes into 180 45 times, so I know that pi over 4 radians is equal to 45 degrees. And we'll do one last one here, b, if I have negative 3 pi over 2, I want to convert that to degrees, I multiply by 180 over pi, pi's cancel, 2 goes into itself once, goes into 180 90 times, 
When I multiply across, I get negative 270 degrees. And so negative 270 degrees is equal to negative 3 pi over 2 in radians.